And now at this time, the title of my message is A Mother's Love. The definition of love is an intense feeling of deep affection. Love is a powerful emotion. The bond between a mother and the child is a great bond of human love. But there is a greater love, and that's the divine love of God. And this love flows through the divine blood of Jesus when you accept him into your heart. This divine love is a bond between you and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No one can break this bond but you by choosing to willfully sin against God. When a mother has love for God, the love of God in her, in her heart, she has the blend of human love and divine love to serve to her children. Godly mothers sense the great responsibility of raising their children to serve the Lord. They are not concerned with having their children have a great social life or maybe having their children be involved in being a superstar in sports or maybe even being rich or famous. No, their main concern is they want their child above everything else to serve the Lord. Growing up as a child, my mother had great love for her children. She was a type of mother that put her children first. She was willing to go without so that her children could have what they needed. She would cook, clean, help us with our homework. You name it, she was there for us. When you see someone use so much of their time and energy to help you, you want to give back to them. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, I read, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets, selfless acts of kindness. That was just my mother's way. She was willing to help her children any way she could. She had great human love. Her love for us was inspiring. Children will recognize a mother's love for them. Some will recognize that love when they're young, and other times, well, it may take a little more time for them to recognize that love, that sacrifice that the mother makes for that child. I pray that one day everyone will recognize their mother's love. For me, it was at a young age. I recognized that my mother was selfless. She had acts, she would do acts of love and kindness for each one of her children. She had a great love. When I was in first grade, my mom would pack my lunch. It was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich along with some chips and a cookie that she made. Then she would give me some milk money to purchase a little carton of milk at the school. I would eat the sandwich and the chips and drink the milk. Then I would take the cookie and I would sell it to a classmate for 10 cents. Then I would go home and give that 10 cents to my mom. I thought that she could use the extra money. But I was too young to know that 10 cents really wasn't that much in that day. My mother was willing to go without so that I could be blessed. That is just like a mother's love. They sacrifice for their children and they're willing to go without so their children can have. It reminds me of a story in the Bible where the widow woman she was gathering up a few sticks 
during this great famine to bake one last cake. And then her son and herself were planning on eating it, and then they were going to die because they were starving to death. But Elijah was told by God to go to the widow woman and ask her to bake him a cake first. This was going to be a tough decision for this widow woman. Was she going to obey the man of God and bake a cake for him first, knowing that he, that it's going to take food away from her son who is starving? But this was the plan of God. And because she obeyed Elijah and did what he asked her to do, her meal barrel never ran empty the rest of that famine. It pays to put God first, even when you think you're taking away from one of your loved ones. God will always look out for you and your loved ones if you will put him first in your life. Maybe the widow woman's son didn't understand at first why his mother was feeding a total stranger before feeding him. But I'm sure he realized later that that sacrifice that his mother made pleased the Lord. And her testimony has been passed down for thousands and thousands of years. Even Jesus mentioned it in Luke chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city in Zidon, unto a woman that was a widow. That widow woman had great human love for her son, but she also had great love for God, and that made her a great mother. Moses' mother had great love for him. Before Moses was born, the Hebrew boy, excuse me, the Hebrew people were multiplying faster than the Egyptian people. So Pharaoh was concerned that if the enemy came against them to fight the Egyptian people, that the Hebrew people would join forces with the enemy and defeat the Egyptian people. So Pharaoh came up with a plan. He ordered the midwives, when they helped deliver the babies of the Hebrew women, that if it was a boy, to kill the baby. But if it was a girl, to let it live. Can you imagine if you were an expecting mother about ready to give birth, not knowing if your baby was going to be snatched away from you and then killed just because it's a baby boy? Back then, they didn't have any technology to know what sex the child was going to be. So I'm sure there was a lot of mothers praying to God asking for a baby girl. This must have been torture, not knowing if you were going to have a baby boy or a baby girl. Think how Moses' mother felt when she gave birth to baby Moses. It was a boy. What was she going to do? But God had a plan. And this is a great lesson on how God is in control. Fortunately, the midwives feared God, and they did not obey Pharaoh. But that didn't mean that the male babies were safe. Pharaoh was not going to let a few disobedient midwives keep him from carrying out his devilish plan. But how was Moses' parents going to keep Moses safe? They were just slaves. It was just a matter of time before Moses was going to be found out and then killed for three months. 
They were able to hide baby Moses. And they knew that they were going to have to come up with another plan. So Moses' mother was going to do something that would seem drastic to most people. But it was really God's plan. Moses' mother made a little ark out of bulrushes. And then she dabbed it with slime and with pitch. And then she placed little baby Moses in the little ark and then sent it down the river. I can just picture Moses' mom holding him close, kissing him all over him again and again, not wanting to let him go, but knowing it was his only hope for survival as she starts to place him in the ark. She had to weigh out the dangers of her son, try to keep him for herself. She would risk a soldier finding him and then killing him, or she could send him down the river, and who knows? There was crocodiles in that river. There was predators in that river, or maybe even the river itself would kill baby Moses. Well, she had to trust in God, and God protected baby Moses. Even though she couldn't be with baby Moses, she knew that she had to let go and let God work it out. This was a plan of God, and this plan was going to save the Hebrew people from Egyptian bondage. Moses' sister watched from afar off, and as the ark floated down the river, Pharaoh's daughter was just so happy to be bathing in the river as the, float, as the ark was floating by. Coincidence? I think not. This was the hand of God protecting Moses, guiding that little ark right where it needed to be, timing it out for Pharaoh's daughter to be bathing herself right at that exact time. And when Pharaoh's daughter saw that little ark with baby Moses in it, she had compassion on baby Moses, and she wanted to keep him for herself. Moses' sister was right there, and he asked her, and she asked, Moses' sister asked Pharaoh's daughter if she should go and find a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby. Now, naturally, Pharaoh's daughter says yes. So Moses' sister goes back and gets their mother. Only God could have orchestrated such a great plan, but Moses' mother had to be a yielded vessel to that plan to allow it to work out. She had to take the step of faith for that plan to go into action. Sometimes we don't see what the end result's going to be when God wants us to do something. That is why we have to use our faith and trust in God to work it all out according to his will. I'm sure it was the hardest thing for Moses' mother to place that little baby in that little ark and send it down river. But it was going to be the salvation of her child. There comes a time in every mother's life that they're going to have to put their child in God's hands and trust that God will protect them. Yes, we live in a cruel world today, but Moses lived in a cruel world where people wanted to kill him as a baby. Look at Jesus. When he was a baby, he lived in a cruel world. King Herod wanted to kill all the babies that were two years and younger. Just like God had a plan for Moses' life to deliver the Hebrew people out of Egyptian bondage, he has a plan, he had a plan for Jesus' life to deliver the human race out of the bondage of sin. Maybe you feel cheated because you didn't grow up in a godly home with godly love. Jesus came and died on the cross so that we all can have divine love. 
Jesus had a wonderful earthly mother, and she loved and cared for Jesus. But when she came to see him, while he was teaching, they told him that his mother and his brethren were there to see him. And he answered in Mark chapter 3, verse 33b through 35, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them, which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. In other words, the most important thing in life is to do the will of the Father. And that will is to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Salvation is a gift to all men, women, boy, girl, of any race. Everybody is welcome to receive Jesus. It doesn't matter how you were treated as a child. You can have the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in your life if you open your heart's door and let Jesus in. You need to be determined, though, and not let the devil rob you of what God has planned for your life. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. If you reach out in faith, then God will reward your faith with his glory and power. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's a story in the Bible about a mother's love and determination. She's a Canaan woman that came to Jesus seeking a miracle for her daughter who was grievously vexed with a demonic spirit. When she saw Jesus, she began to beg Jesus for mercy. But Jesus doesn't respond to her cries. And it says in Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 through 24, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the natural, you might think Jesus is being cruel to this woman. But Jesus was just testing her faith. Now, if you were in this woman's shoes, would you have given up and went home thinking that Jesus really doesn't care about me? This mother had great love for her daughter. Even though this woman was not of the household of faith, she still had great faith, and she held fast to that faith. And in Matthew chapter 15, verses 25 through 28, I read, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, but yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole. From that very hour, Jesus told the woman that her faith was great, and she received a miracle for her daughter. What a great lesson how we can learn from this mother's love. 
The mother's love didn't let her upbringing keep her from believing in the miracle power of God. Her heart was in the right condition to pull down a miracle from heaven. The mother's love didn't allow pride or bitterness to fulfill her heart when, she first, when it first seemed like Jesus was turning her, his back on her. The mother's love was willing to receive a crumb from the master's table. And instead, she received the whole loaf because her heart was in the right condition. The Lord has so much to offer us in this final hour, but you will miss out if your heart is not in the right condition. The love of a mother is a great thing, but there is nothing greater than the love of God. Friend, I'd like to give you this opportunity right now to receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Maybe you're a mother that's unsaved, but you want to do right. Well, this is your opportunity. Let the divine blood of Jesus cleanse your soul. That will be the path to raise your kids in a godly way. At this time, I want everyone who needs Jesus in their heart to pray with me. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Now at this time, I want to pray for all the mothers. Those mothers that may be struggling right now to make ends meet, I want to pray for a financial blessing. Those mothers that may be struggling physically with ache and pain in their body, that they need strength because they're trying to work two jobs just to make ends meet. We want to pray for them too. And we want to pray that they'll be blessed in a mighty way financially. So at this time, let's all of us just pull down heaven together, asking God to move in a great way for each one of them. Lord, just move for those mothers that are out there struggling. Lord, just wrap your loving arms around each one of them. Let them feel your holy presence come upon them. Lord, just move in a special way. Lord, give them the strength that they need in the blood name of Jesus. Lord, bless them spiritually, physically, and financially. Give them the wisdom and guidance that they need as they help their children grow in the Lord. Amen. Now, friend, maybe there's a need in your life. Well, I'd like to pray for you now. The Bible says that believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I am a believer. Those of you that are listening, put your hand on your listening device. And those of you that are watching, put your hand on the screen right now. This is a point of contact. And let's just pull down heaven together. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know what they need. Break their bondage and set them free. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus. Amen. Friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now, friend, I want to encourage you to go on to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will guide you, comfort you in your time of need. And the mothers who have just accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, you need to go on to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Like I said, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you, comfort you, give you that wisdom and knowledge on which way to go for your children, to help your children throughout the day. Well, all you need to do is just say glory. And when you say glory, just mean it from your whole heart. The Holy Spirit can come in, take over your tongue, speak in a heavenly language. And when he's doing that, just yield on over. Let your tongue go. 
And when you let your tongue go and he speaks through you in a heavenly language, it's going to be a glorious time in the Lord. You're going to be blessed in a wonderful way. So now I'm going to call down this great anointing upon you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lord, Heavenly Father, as I call down this great anointing upon them, receive ye the Holy Ghost, receive ye the Holy Ghost, and keep on praising them, keep on praising them, just glorifying Jesus, glorifying the King, just yielding to that love, yielding to that grace, praising Jesus. Let that power go all through your body. Let him bless you in a glorious way. And Lord, just move as they're yielding on over to you. Just keep on yielding on over. And as you're yielding on over, let that power go all through your body, yielding to that love, yielding to that grace, glorifying Jesus in a very special way. It's you and Jesus, just you and Jesus, praising the King in the blood name of Jesus Christ. Yeah.